The second bill covered by this rule would end the outdated ban on crude oil exports. The ban was first put in place in 1975 as a response to the Arab oil embargo, but it's clearly no longer necessary, and it's tying our hands both economically and strategically around the world. Over the last decade, the United States has become the leading producer of oil and natural gas in the world, which is good news for the countless Americans who work in the oil industry. And it's even better news for the American economy. Mr. Speaker, there is broad bipartisan support for lifting the 40-year-old ban on crude oil exports. Leading economists, including former Obama economic policy advisor Lawrence Summers and leading scholars at Harvard University, support lifting the ban. Former U.N. Ambassador and Energy Secretary under President Clinton, Bill Richardson, said that the U.S. needs to export our oil and gas in order to, quote, help us geopolitically in Eastern Europe against Russia, close quote. Recently, 135 senior legislative leaders from 40 states and Puerto Rico sent a letter calling on Congress to lift the ban. The letter notes that, quote, the outdated federal export restrictions on crude oil and LNG are detrimental to American workers, our collective security, and economic recovery in our states, close quote. There were three signers of the letter from Mr. Hastings' home state of Florida. Numerous editorial boards around the country, including those at the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, the Detroit News, the Denver Post, the Washington Times, and the Houston Chronicle, have touted the benefits of ending the ban. Most notably, 69 percent of the American people support lifting this ban. Shouldn't we stand with the American people? Now, Mr. Speaker, let's talk about some of the benefits from lifting the outdated ban. First, it is estimated that this legislation would create 630,000 additional U.S. jobs by 2019. Lifting the ban would also benefit U.S. manufacturers and boost our GDP. Second, the Congressional Budget Office estimates that lifting the ban would generate $1.4 billion from oil and gas leases over the next 10 years. That is really a significant number. Third, the Governmental Accountability Office finds that lifting the ban would lower gas prices by anywhere from one and a half to 13 cents per gallon. Even President Obama's own Department of Energy found that increased oil exports would help lower gas prices. Fourth, lifting the ban will allow the United States to help our allies abroad. For example, Russia has continuously used their control over oil to pressure European countries to comply with Russia's wishes. If a country refused, Russia would threaten to cut off their energy supply. By lifting the ban, the United States can begin supporting our allies and, in turn, weaken Russia's grip on many European countries. It's very interesting that this administration has worked hard to open up oil export capabilities for Iran, yet they are refusing to allow the United States to do so. By allowing Iran to export oil, the President has essentially given the Ayatollah a leg up in the global marketplace, placing the of Iran over those of the United States. This is yet another example of the President of, of the United States standing with the people of Iran and the Ayatollah and not standing up for the people of America. These are four very clear benefits from repealing the ban and unlocking our nation's energy potential. Now, the White House has said they believe lifting the oil export ban is a decision that should be made by the Commerce Department, not by Congress. So let me get this straight. The Obama administration would rather unelected, unaccountable federal bureaucrats at the Department of Commerce to make this decision instead of the democratically elected Congress. I think that speaks to a far larger problem with this White House and how they believe our government should work. <laughs> Ultimately, Mr. Speaker, both of these bills are about empowering the American people and getting the government out of the way. These bill bills have broad support. And I urge my colleagues to approve this rule. And let's move forward on passing these common sense bills. And I reserve the balance of my time.